Hello everybody, it's Clayton again with a new video. And the title and the thumbnail are not clickbait, I promise. In this video I am going to explain when you will know when a dividend stock is guaranteed to drop. It's nothing new with dividend investing, it, it always happens. It's something that you can continuously monitor. It's also something you do not need to worry about as a dividend investor. But for people that don't understand it, I wanted to explain it and kind of go into detail. Before I get into that though, I just wanted to kind of do a quick update on my portfolio. We went over it last time. Obviously, nothing has really changed uh, with the purchase of the telecommunications. And it looks like a few more dividends have started to, or they're going to be paying out shortly. I've earned now I'm at $8.35. Again, continues to grow. That's something that makes me very happy. When it comes to funding, we've only got... Sorry, I clicked the wrong button. Let me go to activity. You've only got five that have paid out so far. Um, obviously, once more start to actually come into the account. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once more start to come into the account, then that money will be reinvested once I hit $10 um, into my portfolio. Now, with the main topic that I wanted to touch on this video was a comment that I got on my last video by someone by the name of Jojo Jacobs. And the question read, can you invest as early as one day before dividend day and get the dividend? The answer, as I briefly commented on that, post, on that comment, was yes and no. But it depends on how you look at it, and that's kind of why I wanted to break it down. If you're looking at before dividend day, as in the day when the payout is going to happen, the answer is no. You cannot invest the day before payout to get dividends. That's just not how it works. Now, what you can do is invest the day before the X dividend date. And let me show you first off. I'm going to use Microsoft because I'm about to be going. I'm going to be going back and talking about something else that had a few comments on that I had spoke about last video. But let me just use Microsoft as an example. So when we go to Microsoft and you look at their last six months, no, sorry, that was, that was a later topic. When you go to their dividend, you will see the, that it, clears the, it states the declare date, X dividend date, record date, and payout date. The X dividend date is the date that JoJo was asking about. If you invest the day before an X dividend date, so for Microsoft, it would be if you have any stock investment as of February 18th, you will get the uh, dividend when they pay out. Now, there is a strategy called dividend capture strategy that some people do. I don't do it. I don't really advise with it. And this is kind of where I said I'll guarantee that the price will drop because it happens literally every time. So on the 18th, we'll, we'll use Microsoft for this example. On the 18th of February, that's when you have to have your stock purchased for Microsoft to get their dividends on the 19th, or sorry, to be qualified as of the 19th. On the 19th, the stock will drop, is a guarantee. It drops at least the price of the dividend. Sometimes you'll see even more for the dropping because it essentially makes up for what they're giving out. That's, that's how dividend stocks work. So if they're giving out 51 cents to each of the shareholders, you're going to see the stock's value drop by at least that 51 cents. I've seen, I think, one or two cases that I know of where it didn't drop the full amount, but it almost always does. And you can look through any dividend that you've held or that you're going to hold and see that uh, you can see through their stocks when their X dividend date was and how that's worked. And like I was stating, there's a thing called a dividend capture strategy. And what this is, and briefly, as you saw on the Microsoft tab, there's the declaration date, which it's the date where the company declares that they're going to pay their dividends. Um, for companies that do it consistently and have been doing it for 10, 15, 20 years, which are the ones I like to invest in. This declaration date is nice because you see what you're going to be getting paid, but it's not something you have to worry about. But there are companies and there are times when you will see that the dividend has been slashed, cut, or completely just will not be getting paid out. And you'll see that on the, on the declaration date if the stockholders want to pay it or not. Excuse me. The X dividend date, as I said, this is the cutoff date to be eligible to receive that dividend payment. You can literally buy the stock one minute before stocks close and you are eligible the next day for that dividend. You do not have to hold it for months. You do not have to hold it for weeks, days, years. Literally just the day before the X dividend date and you will be set. Now, as you even see in their kind of summary, this is also the day the stock price often drops in, a, in accord with the declared dividend amount. So there are people for a living that use this strategy. I am not one of them. Um, it works with larger dividends, especially like annual dividends. It's not as much usually of a drop, or they'll hold it for another day or two before they sell it off. But you can sell it off on the ex-dividend date 
you've already met the qualifications. You don't need to wait any longer. Once the morning begins of, the, of that date, you can sell it off if you want to. You're still going to get the dividends, regardless if you hold it or not. The date of record usually is one to two days after because they kind of work in tandem. The date of record is the important date, but because it takes a few days, that's why they kind of work together. Like the ex dividend date is when you need to hold it by. It takes usually one to two, and even some companies three, uh, before the company officially records all the shareholders that are eligible for the dividend. And again, all you have to do is be eligible for the ex dividend date. If you sold it, it's not something that comes across their records. It's not something that affects you. And the pay date, obviously, it's just the date you'll get paid. Usually, it's within two weeks. Some are a lot earlier. And you'll see some that are later. I think, yeah, Microsoft's, what's this, three weeks? It's not too outlandish to see that, especially because it's quarterly payments. But to answer JoJo's original question, the answer is yes and no. If you are focusing on the day the dividend is going to be paid out, which would be, the let's say, March 12th of this year, you cannot buy it March 11th. But if you buy it February 18th and then sell it on February 19th, you will get the dividend for Microsoft. So JoJo, if you're watching, I hope that answers your question. For anybody else, if you ever have questions, I will briefly answer them in the comments. But if I feel that they could be more of a discussion-based question or need more explanation, I'll gladly, I'm going to make a video about it. Or if I just get enough questions and I feel like let's just do kind of doing an answering session. Now, another thing I wanted to comment on, and that, this is why I have Microsoft up. There was a comment the other day by one of, uh, somebody else on the video, Ryan Moody 21 and I apologize if you didn't want your name out there, but it's a public comment. And he asked, because obviously I spoke about Microsoft, and I said, it's not really a dividend that I like. It's not something that catches my eye. I don't like the yield. And his comment makes perfect sense to someone that doesn't do dividend investing. And I'll explain what I mean. And it's not a slight towards anyone that has this question because it's something that's very easily misunderstood. So he asked, or stated, Microsoft was $146 three months ago. Comparing that to today, that's a 27% return to today. So I don't understand what you're saying when you talk about a small yield savings. Those numbers just don't match at all. Now, he's not wrong. When you look at how much the stock has grown, it has skyrocketed. It's not the right amount, but it, it has grown a substantial amount in the last few months. Let's go to the six month period. It was in October. It was at 134. And now we're at what? We peaked at 188. That's a 50. What's that? Almost $54 increase. 53 and a half dollar increase. That is a great stock if you are planning on selling or anything along those lines. But with that being said, this is why I said it doesn't interest me as much. The dividend yield is what affects me as a dividend shareholder. The 1.1%, and as, as I said before, you can get a better yield rate or interest rate holding a high yield savings account, let's just say Ally Bank, which is at 1.6. Though the stock went up 27% and the stock went up nearly 40 bucks, let's look at their dividend history or dividend. Yeah, we'll look at the history. It's fine. There was an increase from July to November, but let's look from November to February. There was literally no increase in their dividends. But if you look at November to February on their summary, let's go back here. November, we were at 144. And as of right now, we're at 184. So it went up $40. But the dividend growth wasn't changed at all. There was no effect on your dividend, regardless of what the stock went up in value. So the yield dropped for anyone looking to purchase Microsoft stock. Now, if you already had Microsoft stock, when it was $140, it's obviously a better yield. I don't have the math in front of me and I don't even wanna make a fool of myself trying to do it on top of my head. But, so the dividend yield was obviously higher when it was 140 compared to that. But the as the yield decreased and as the stock increased, nothing changed with the dividend payout. There was no increase in the payout. It's the exact same amount as it was when the stock was $40 cheaper. So that's why I said that to me, it is not a stock that interests me currently. Now, if the value of the stock decreases, which I doubt will happen because Microsoft is really taking off right now, which is just, it's cool to see for anyone that owns Microsoft. And I myself have always enjoyed Microsoft products for basically my whole life. Nothing against Apple. I've just always been a Microsoft kind of guy. So I grew up on what I've always played. And I'm happy with Microsoft for, for doing as well as they're doing. And for me, the only way I'm going to invest in Microsoft is if the value decreases, which I said I don't think will happen, 
or if they raise the dividend yield or the dividend payout. By raising the payout, the yield will increase. But to bring it to a percentage that I feel comfortable or that I feel like is worth investing my money, I just don't see that happening anytime soon. They would need to drastically raise their payout. And I just I don't see it. So right now, let's just pull up a calculator. If we do where they're at right now, we've got 183. I don't know why it didn't work. 183. My number lock on. 183.71 times 0 0.001. That's where you get the, it's rounded up a little bit. So let's just say, what do we need to get at? So if I, I'm comfortable, I said around 3%, two and a half at the, at the least. So if we want to get there, we have to get to a annual payout of $4.59. It's possible. Let's see what that would be quarterly. So that breaks down to $1.14. So that's more than double what they're paying now. And I'm pretty sure in their history, they've, yeah, this is the highest they've ever paid is the 51 cents. So for me to feel comfortable with Microsoft, they would need to more than double what they're paying currently at this, at this price of the stock uh, for it to be something that of, that's of interest to me. Now, for anyone else that really wants a safe stock, I think Microsoft is one, but for a dividend investor currently, the value just isn't there. And I wanted to kind of explain it because I saw a few different people question why I said that. Again, great stock. I just don't think the value is there for a dividend investor. Keyword, dividend investor. But with that being said, uh, just wanted to kind of answer the one question by JoJo. Just touch on that comment because it seemed to confuse some people by what I meant. And besides that, thank you guys for watching. The channel is, again, growing faster than I would have ever thought. It's just me talking to a computer screen about dividends. And I'm surprised there's any response at all. I, I greatly appreciate anybody watching. As I've said, hey, I'm still here. Uh, I am not a financial advisor. I'm explaining why I do the things I do and how I value each of my dividends that I own, stocks I own. I was also explaining what the dividend capture strategy is and how to get paid a dividend and when you'll get paid a dividend and when to know you will be qualified or when you have to own it to get paid. That's the purpose of this video. But please don't take anything I say as fact or, or not fact because it's factual but anything i say as a reason to invest in something do your own research and figure out what is best for you what you're comfortable with and essentially along those lines so again thank you for watching if you liked the video please give it a thumbs up it helps the youtube alg algorithm uh, comment below i'll gladly answer any questions even feedback if you like the video if you don't like the video i'd love to hear from you i am always one for criticism or especially if it's great or like giving me advice. I greatly appreciate it. Or if you just want to say thank you for watching or thank you for creating the content or just want to say whatever you'd like. I, I greatly appreciate it. I love the interactions. Um, and if you're not subscribed, feel free to subscribe. You do not have to. But again, I would greatly appreciate that. But either way, thank you all for coming and have a great rest of your day.